Um, so as we, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So we have um, the agenda for today is a program overview, um, which I will be doing. Then Miriam will be doing um, information about promoting Google products, how Google can help your classmates. And then Alex will be doing ambassador teams and resources and planning events. So I'm going to start moving pretty quickly just so we can take advantage of the time we have left and so that Miriam and Alex can really get to the meat of the information. Um, so the program actually, just give you a little history, started off as pizza parties geared towards engineers. Um, and over the past few years, we've actually developed this program to having to really introducing students to Google Apps and everything Google has to offer. Um, please keep in mind you're representing Google on campus. Um, so benefits of the program, um, you've seen these before, so I won't go into too much detail, but I do want to say there are two main goals. First, uh, spread Google products on campus, um, and also help us understand the unique qualities of your school. You've all been there for a couple of years and really know what works, and schools are different. So we're really interested in hearing from you um, and employing you to create um, really unique and creative events. Um, so, and as a... As an ambassador, um, you're a part of Google, so there will be opportunities for you to get early looks at some of our products. Um, and of course, we have the apps trainings for Docs, Gmail, Calendar, and Sites. Um, so last year, the, uh, the program basically consisted of 80 ambassadors representing 67 schools, and we do have some returning ambassadors, so I just want to say welcome back. Um, and we had a total of 120 events reaching almost 5,000 students. And as you can see, the average cost was pretty low. It was $1.67. So the point of this is just to show you that, you know, there's a lot you can do with just a little. Um, so we're hoping, you know, you can go out and be creative um, and reach a lot of different populations on campus without um, just food and swag, although we know that's fun. So <laughs> um, be creative is the main point. Um, and this year, uh, as you can see, the program has grown significantly. So we have over 120 ambassadors representing 68 schools. We have a goal of more events, but higher quality events. Um, this year we're also focusing on um, training on Google Apps. And then also, um, you know, we're making uh, efforts this year to really increase communications with these virtual trainings. And we will be creating a Google group and, of course, the ambassador sites page. Um, and then just kind of wrapping up, I just want to give you kind of a look of what the program is like. So we are the university programs team um, that kind of heads up this program. And then so the, the point of this slide is to show you that we have lead ambassadors and the ambassadors. Um, but the point is work with your team. So we selected our um, lead ambassador to be a main point of contact. But all ambassadors should be in contact with our team and, and submit events and with your Google contact. If you're planning events, everyone on the ambassador team at, at your school should know. And uh, you can always turn to your lead if there are any disagreements about events or budgets. Um, so also just to give you an idea, Eng, Eng is obviously engineering. And then PSGA actually is an acronym that stands for Product, Sales, General, and Administrative, which is basically everything at Google that's not engineering. So I'm going to turn it over to Miriam at this point uh, to talk about promoting Google Apps. Okay, thanks, Kira. So as um, Kira was just mentioning, we are going to have a renewed focus for this program year on the products. So you guys are going to be uh, important sources for us of helping spread awareness and usage of individual products on campus. Um, so first, I kind of want to mention that some of the schools that um, you guys represent are uh, what we call app schools, so universities that are using Google Apps for Education um, on campus. And that means that your university has signed up with our team to host email, calendar, um, communication platforms via Google. So everything is hosted by us. Um, and other schools are, are not there yet. But basically what this is all about is really cloud computing. So sometimes during the year there may be different activities that uh, schools that are using Google Apps will do. Um, but regardless of whether or not your school is a Google Apps school, the products are the same. Um, it's just whether it's something you use on your personal account or something that you use through your school. So going into the next, um, the next slide about cloud computing and really what, what that's all about. Um, so really 
we believe at Google in, um, in what we call the cloud, which is that all of your information, all of your documents, all of your calendars should be available regardless of where you're working or what system you're working on. So I'm sure a lot of you have experience um, working on a document or a project that, um, you know, tied to your hard drive and then your computer is stolen, you spill coffee on it. Um, and all of a sudden that, that information becomes unusable and lost. Uh, what we think is important here is really the cloud computing model, which means that applications um, should work on your browser, not just on your computer. So the network in itself becomes your computer. Um, really, this is about freeing you and your information to follow you wherever you go. So being accessible on your mobile device, being accessible on your library PC um, when you're studying abroad in Spain, really it shouldn't matter where you are, your data can always be where you are. Um, so really, before cloud computing, the way that students um, especially work together was really on a one-to-one -one basis. So, um, you know, one example of this is like working together on a group, group presentation. Um, and you can see from this slide uh, how messy that can be. So if you work on one version, you're working with uh, four other people in your group. Um, John, Bob, and Sally send it back to you um, with their revisions, but, you know, Rachel, is a little latecomer, slow to the game, sends you another revision back after you've already been through two rounds. So how annoying is that to go through all these attachments, um, compile everybody's feedback, and um, really try to um, consolidate everyone's changes into all these different revisions, and it just becomes a total mess. So really what, what we focus on in building our products is to avoid that hassle. So what we want to do is really make it that the, the latest version is the current version. There's, there's never any revisions that have to go back and forth or have to be updated, um, and it really enables a level of collaboration um, that's in real time. So this is, this is what the cloud is all about. There's only one version. Um, and what we focus on on all of our products, including Gmail, Docs, Sites, um, and Calendar especially, is really keeping this, um, this idea of collaboration and real-time usage uh, in the moment. So really, I mean, this is, this is just a little scope of how we build our products and how we think about what users want. And um, an important subset of our users are obviously you guys, students, um, and the folks you're going to be talking to. So um, these are the things that matter to us when we're talking about building or promoting our product. It's really how accessible are they? Um, that gets back at the whole idea of, you know, moving to the cloud. Should your information should follow you where, regardless of where you are. Um, how easy is it to share and work together on documents, to create them, to edit them, um, and to share them? Uh, freedom, are you always in control of your data? Of course, that's really important to us, obviously, as a company. And simplicity, is this going to be a product that um, users can intuitively understand without too much training or, um, or explanation? And then security, how safe can you feel that um, your data is um, not going to be lost or not going to be seen by people you don't want it to, to be seen by. And we've gone to great lengths in all of our products to make sure that each of these, these areas is, is well accounted for. So this brings us into the next se section, which is really, that was kind of a background about, you know, how we think about cloud computing, how we think about building out products. And now this is where you guys come in, is really how these products are useful to people in school and in college. Um, so first I want to kind of throw out a, a site that you guys should all get very, very comfortable with, which is google.com slash app slash students. Um, this is a great place to start when you are on campus doing demos or you're doing training sessions or you're talking to students about these products and how they can be helpful or useful in their lives. Um, so this just focuses on the, the apps products, the Google Apps for Education products, which is Gmail, Docs, Calendar, and Sites. Um, so this is a great place to start, and we'll just kind of walk through a couple of these key areas um, within each product, and keep in mind that we'll be doing deep dive um, training sessions for each of these products over the next coming weeks to help you prepare for the training sessions you're going to be holding on campus. So first off is um, Gmail. I'm sure a lot of you guys are really comfortable using email um, as we have seen by um, 
a lot of your contact information. You're already using Gmail, which is great. So I'm sure you already know a lot of what the key benefits are, but some talking points really are, you know, not, not worrying about spam, junk mail, unwanted messages, since um, Gmail is able to block it before it even gets to your inbox. Um, you never have to worry about storage space. I'm sure a lot of your um, on-campus emails have some quota issues that you've bumped into time and again. And um, luckily with Gmail, we, we try to get rid of that. So there's also a lot of um, functionality to help you stay and get organized using labels, for example, and filters, um, and a lot of the starring functionalities that let you kind of keep track of the mail that's important to you. Um, there's also threaded, um, threaded messaging, so each message you send is grouped with its responses, and we think that that's um, a really intuitive way to kind of think about your email. So as the conversation continues to grow, you can always see your mail in context. Um, and obviously Gmail search is um, a big part of it, so building in the search functionality into your email so you don't have to scan individual emails to find the, find the note you're looking for. Next is calendar. So Google Calendar is going to be a great way for you guys to collaborate with each other, to schedule um, meetings and training sessions and a lot of the events that you hold on campus. And as you'll hear about later, we have a shared calendar for all of you guys that um, we are excited to be working on together so we can all keep track of each other's events and other things that are happening on campus. Um, and then there's Google Docs. So this is probably um, the, the most important product to be talking about while you're on campus. Um, so working on um, Google Docs, Google Spreadsheets, and Google Presentations um, within Google Docs is really a great way to actually live in the cloud. So working together on um, your assignments, um, whether it's a brainstorm, whether it's planning a spring break trip, um, whatever the need is, there is an easy way for you to access all of your documents, spreadsheets, and presentations online. You can keep track of everyone's changes. You can access it from anywhere since it's stored on a web browser instead of on your um, computer. And there's all kinds of functionality to be able to enable you to print, add footnotes, um, do custom formatting so that it aligns with your assignment needs. So this is going to be a big area and a big product that we'll be talking about a lot this year, and we look forward to having your guys' help kind of spread the word about Google Docs with your classmates and professors. And then the last product I'll talk about is Google Sites. So this is a great um, product to think about when you are working with a student organization, when you're working on a group project, uh, when you're working with a lot of different students or different people um, and, you know, want to keep track of information in one central place. Uh, the nice thing about this is for those of you that don't have that much um, technical skills or background, you don't need to know any HTML, you don't need to know how to do very much to be able to customize the look and feel of your site in, in really powerful ways. So basically with just a couple clicks, you can use templates, you can embed calendars, you can embed um, videos and um, spreadsheets, documents. Uh, anything into this one site to easily enable people in your group to, to keep track of what's going on. Um, and then you always have access to control and edit um, who can work on your site and who can see it. So the student site that, or the student ambassador site that we have just recently shared with you guys is a good example of that. So keeping everybody on the same page about what information is important and where you should go. Um, so with that said, I mean, there's going to be a lot more product information that comes out um, as we continue the program, and we'll do all kinds of training with, the, um, with some of the product. And we'll also be giving you guys some special opportunities, as Kira mentioned, to um, get uh, some advanced previews. So one thing that we're excited to be announcing is that you guys are all going to be um, added to the early testers of Google Wave. So if you haven't heard about it yet, you should look it up. It's a really exciting new product that we are just announcing an early version of, and it's an invite only right now. So not only are you guys all going to get invites um, later today or tomorrow, but you're also going to get 99 additional invites to be sharing with students um, on campus. So it's a great thing to talk about when you are holding events or setting up a table on campus that you can um, share with other students um, on campus. And the important thing about this is really uh, about getting your feedback. And so hearing what you guys think of the product, what, um, what is missing, what kinds of tools students would need that would make the product even more valuable is really important to us. So we're excited to be able to give you guys that opportunity. 
Uh, and with that, I'm going to give uh, it over to Alex, who's going to talk to you guys a little bit more about the resources that are available to you. Hi, you guys. Okay, I'm going to transition you into the Ambassador Teams and Resources. Um, so you guys are all going to get campus kits, um, and it's going to be sent out to one person on your team, uh, at, kind of at random, so you guys can one of you can expect to get the t-shirts for everybody. And um, within the kit, it's also going to include a $100 credit card for you guys to use for your events. Um, and then 30 cups, napkins, and plates for your first event that involves food. Um, so this is probably going to be like a study break or something along those lines. If you guys hold other events that, that need um, cups, napkins, and plates, we have a very large supply. So we can send them to you whenever you need them. Um, and you'll just sign up, sign up for that in the form that you fill out. Um, Schwab will also be sent throughout the year, and it might have to do with the apps that we're teaching. Um, it's actually kind of undecided what, what you guys are going to be getting, but stay tuned for sur good surprises. Um, so another key resource for you guys is the Ambassador Sites page, which Miriam has actually just um, shared with you recently. So if you guys um, want to check that out, it, it looks like this. Um, oh. Sorry, I'll go back a little bit. There we go. Um, so if you look on the, the key um, to the left, they ha we have all of the different sites that you can visit. Um, let's start out with um, the ambassador directory, which looks like a lot like this. Um, if you look at the bottom, there's a link to the ambassador contact information by name, um, and then you can switch over to it by school. So we encourage you to be using this list to communicate with your team and also with um, ambassadors from other schools uh, because we highly encourage you guys to share best practices um, and work together even though you're on different campuses. Um, so next we will look at the Ambassador of the Month. So this is going to be featured um, every month. We're going to highlight the, the events that a great ambassador threw on campus and we'll put pictures um, and best practices so you guys can share those ideas. Um, and then you have the calendar of events. It's going to look like this. So the first the first link is the event request form, which some of you guys have actually already filled out. And so if you click on this link, you're going to get a Google form, which you guys are probably pretty familiar with. And you want to fill out all the information um, that you need to give us, including the, well, actually, we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but we want you to submit these two weeks prior to your event um, so we have enough time to approve them and also send you anything you might need. Next is the shared calendar. Um, it's you can see it on the right, there's an image, but that's going to be populated by you guys, so it should fill out pretty soon. But as soon as you guys have an event, we want you to put it on the calendar so everyone knows what's going on around campuses, and we can share it with other students. Um, and then it's the success stories form. So this is what you fill out after you're done with an event. Um, it's pretty important that you put that up there, because that's also how we're going to pull um, ambassadors of the month, and um, that's also how you guys are going to share ideas. Lastly is the photo album. We really highly encourage you to post your pictures because that's how our team knows that you're doing your job and that's also how other people can, can learn more about your events. Um, and so here's the, the site of the pictures. Um, right now it's just a logo for your school, but eventually you guys are going to want to start putting your pictures in there so all the other ambassadors can see. Oh, how'd that get in there? <laughs> um, so this is a, a little joke on our team because Miriam went to UCLA and I went to USC. But it brings up a good point that um, you guys can work together on events with other schools. So maybe if UCLA and USC is having um, a football game, you guys can work together to have some kind of competition and promote Google at the same time. Um, so now we're going to go into planning events. So you really want to look at the purpose of your, of your event. Um, because the nature of your event is going to affect your preparation, your target audience, and the resources that you're going to need. Uh, so the first event we're thinking about are the product trainings. And those you, you'll get a lot of information from us. And what you'll probably need is the product material for so the training deck that we send um, and any swag that goes along with the product. Um, but these, you don't actually really need much for these, for these events. We suggest that you plan the, um, to host the apps training soon after the trainings that we give to you so the information is fresh in your mind and you guys can relay it to the other students. Um, secondly is Tech Talks. Um, this will probably be more relevant for the engineers in the group, um, and you're going to be looking for a technical audience. So you're going to have to find a speaker, um, and often the engineers on your team can be the speakers, and they can talk about your proje their projects while at Google. But we do want to point out that some of your projects were um, confidential, so you can only share information that's public. Um, and then there's the typical study breaks, and this is when you're probably going to use 
um, your money for food and also the plates, cups, and napkins that we send you. Uh, it's probably the best time to do these stu study breaks are during uh, midterms and finals. Um, and you can also bring in uh, a Google game. For example, you can have everybody bring a Rubik's Cube and have Rubik's Cube races or something along those lines. So it doesn't just have to be focused on food. It can be fun study breaks as well. Um, so no, a note on recruiting events is we are going to send university program specialists to campus um, for recruiting events. So we suggest that you work with the U UP specialist listed in the ambassador contacts page um, and that you don't host recruiting events on your own. They may call on you for help um, spreading the word or posting posters, but um, you really want to rely on them when you're, when you're planning these events. And if you guys get recruiting questions, which would probably come up, you want to make sure that you direct them all to your university program's contact. And if you're unsure about how to do that, you can ask us um, and you can direct them to our team as well. You can feel free to take resumes and pass on the strong resumes um, to the specialist that you were assigned to, and they will look into them and follow up with, with candidates. Um, one more thing that you guys can try doing is competitions, which are actually pretty fun. Um, you can use the $100 gift card that we give you for prizes, um, or you can do without prizes. It can just be bragging rights that you, you guys are planning these for. Um, but you want to make sure that um, you're, you're using, like, maybe you can, sorry, you can do technical challenges, scavenger hunts, product challenges, anything of those sorts, but try and be creative because that's what we're trying to do with these new events. Okay, so here is the event approval form. Um, the, thing, the fields that we're going to ask for is event name, purpose, location, audience, date, estimated attendance, and project and projected expenses. Um, if you notice, that's very similar to the information we ask for um, after you create your event. So if you want to cut and paste, then that's perfectly fine. Um, but we do need you to fill it out for approval and then fill out it, fill it out again to show that you've held the event. Um, so now we want you to think about who you're inviting. Um, so the first thing to ask yourself is this a technical audience. If it's a technical talk, we suggest that you only advertise around the computer science buildings. Um, you're welcome to advertise anywhere, but usually the content isn't as interesting for people who are non-engineers. Um, you also want to think about your audience and how well they know Google Apps. Um, you guys have been interning or working with Google for, for some time now, so you're probably a little bit more in tune with what, how to work each of the applications, so you want to make sure that you're encouraging students to ask questions um, and not moving too fast for them. How many people will attend is another good question. Um, you want to anticipate higher attendance at events when there, where there's a lot of foot traffic. So if you're having an event um, by, by the common dining area or um, close to a lot of classes, then you're probably going to have more people stopping by. Okay, so posters and swag. Um, we will be sending you swag at some points, but in, in general, if we haven't sent it to you, then we probably don't have any to give out. Um, towards the end of the semester, when we see that people are throwing good events, we'll start um, sending you guys more swag um, if we feel that it's necessary, but you're always welcome to, to request cups, plates, and napkins. Um, and then we do have to make a note about posters and flyers. Um, we will be linking poster templates to the sites page, so we want you to be using those and only those templates because um, the, we want to make sure that we're representing the Google brand appropriately and there are some rules and regulations around using the Google logo. Um, if for some reason you do need to print something with the Google logo on it, then make sure to have it approved by us and you can send us an email, um, but you're not allowed to print or post anything with the Google logo unless it's been approved by us. Um, we have heard of teams making large reusable posters with, the Google, with just the Google logo, and that should be fine, but you want to make sure that you get approval from us first. And if you have any questions or unsure about what's okay to post and what's okay to talk about, then you can definitely direct those questions to our team, and we'd be happy to help. Okay, so with that said, um, we're going to start taking Q&A, and I'm going to pass the phone to Mary, uh, sorry, to Kara, who's going to take questions. Hi guys, so I think the easiest way for uh, you guys to submit questions would be through the Q&A portion. Um, it should be uh, at the bottom uh, right pane um, of your view on WebEx. So um, we all kind of specialize in different things, so I'm going to read the question out loud and then pass it off to the appropriate person to answer. So the first question is, should we fill out the event proposal for any sort of event? And Alex will be answering this question. Hi, yes. So you guys have to submit the form for every single event, um, and you will get a response back from us. 
just doing that after, and we wrote, we'll just say approved, and if you guys need the cups, plates, and napkins, then we'll send them out. And if you need anything else for that matter, then we'll be sending them out. Um, and if you haven't heard back from us in time, then you guys can feel free to just send us personally an email, but you should hear back within a week. Next question is, any plans for a similar product to Google Code in apps? So Miriam is the Google Apps Specialist. Um, at this point, no, there's not currently any plans to add that into the product roadmap, but um, we are always adding um, new features and new functionalities into the core suite, which includes Gmail, Calendar, Docs, and Sites at this point. Um, also Google Video, too, um, in the core app suite. Uh, but definitely, if you guys have feedback about events or you have suggestions or you have um, questions, we can help forward that along to the appropriate product team, so feel free to reach out about that. Okay, the next question is how many events should we host each semester? Um, we are going to leave that up to you guys. It's up to you if you want to do larger events that, that use more budget or smaller events um, with a smaller targeted audience, but we would probably say about um, two events at least per semester, but feel free to, to take more. Um, and if you do a larger event and you need more resources, you can let us know. The next question is about the um, site, the Campus Ambassador Resource Guide site that you should have all received invites to. So if you're having issues accessing that, what you'll need to do is press sign in as a different user and then log in that way. Um, if you continue to have issues, you can just let us know, um, but you will not need a, a Google dot com domain account in order to access that. So um, if you guys have a preferred um, account that you would like to be contacted by, so your, your Gmail account as opposed to your school address, please just send us a note and let us know that so we can use that instead. Okay, so next question is, I'm an Eng ambassador. How am I supposed to interact with the PSGA ambassador for my school? That's a really good question. Um, I think that you'll notice that some events uh, can possibly can possibly be ENG focused uh, versus PSGA focused, but I think there's a lot of events that um, you have an opportunity to work on. Um, and it's a great way to kind of connect with all sorts of different students and reach a broad range. So things like study breaks or um, puzzle competitions or things like that. Um, and I think Alex has something to add too. You guys want to make sure that you guys are all working as a team. Um, so if there's an end event, then that's great, but you also want to make sure the PSG&A team is aware of it, especially because you're sharing budget. Um, and the end, you guys probably also want to have a pretty healthy balance between end and PSG&A events. Um, usually the, the non-engineering events will, will actually be open for anybody because they'll be more like study breaks or apps um, trainings. The apps, um, sorry, the engineering only events are focused on engineering events are going to be more like the tech talks and, and that sort of thing. Um, the next question is how can we request uh, for Google tours at a specific location? So depending on your, your guys' school, you might be um, closer to a Google office. There is really no way to, to submit a formal request for that unless um, if you entered in that office, maybe you have a contact there who can host you. But for, for visiting any Google office, you will need a contact. If you're interested in Mountain View or Cambridge, you can get in touch with somebody on our team. Um, and if you need a little bit of help trying to find a contact in another office, you can contact us as well. But in general, you're probably only going to want to host events with people um, in offices where you have someone to host you. The next question is, do we email you guys, um, which is the ambassador team with questions or the specific uh, or the campus-specific Google contact it listed in the doc. It really kind of depends on your question. If it's things regarding ambassador sites or trainings or the event proposals, um, please reach out to us. But if you're having, um, most of our specialists have had um, relationships with your schools for some time, so I think they're a great resource if you're trying to think about events, um, especially recruiting events. Uh, that's who you should be reaching out to. Okay, the next question is, I have friends on various student council boards. Is it permissible to collaborate with them on events? Um, and the answer is yes, but you want to make sure that you're representing Google in the best way when you pick these, um, these student council or these um, other groups. And if you guys have questions, you actually, that's information that you should be including in the events form. So when we approve it, um, if you have any information on, on the group that you're collaborating with, so that would be great to add, um, and then we can approve it. So the next question is, can we use our WAVE invites 
to incentivize event attendance or just pass them out. Absolutely, you can use them um, when you're on campus as a way to get people over to your booth or to your event, um, and it's really intended to be um, a way for you guys to engage with students who are interested and would provide good feedback about the product. Um, so yeah, we encourage you to be thoughtful about who you're giving them out to and in what context you're giving them out. Uh, the next question, can, where can we find the list of new features in Google Apps so we can share it with others? Um, if you guys have along the way any questions, if you are a university that's not on Google Apps and you would like to talk to your administration about getting on Google Apps, um, just feel free to email me, Miriam S. Uh, directly, and I can help you with that. Um, one of our ambassadors, Jewel Howard, at Ho uh, Jewel Burke at Howard University, has actually put together a proposal for um, for exactly that, for talking to your administration about getting Google Apps at your school, um, and we're happy to work with you on that. Um, in terms of finding out the product information um, and more specific uh, content about Google Apps, uh, I would just encourage you guys to go visit our site, which is just google.com slash a slash edu. Um, and as you have questions as they pertain to um, the Google Apps suite of products, please just email me directly. The next question is, is there a way to find out uh, who were the ambassadors last year at my school? Um, if you guys have a question about who your ambassador was and want to find out what worked, what didn't, uh, just uh, email either Alex or myself, Kira, and we can give you the name of the ambassador uh, at your school last year. Okay, so the next question is, if we have someone on our team who is not fulfilling their roles, how do we go about dealing with that? Um, so yes, you guys have uh, teams of varying sizes, and I'm sure that there might be some people who aren't pulling their weight. Um, that would be something to talk to our team about, so if you want to send us an email, um, to, to the one of the four of us, we can help you figure out what's going on. Um, and also, you want to make sure that the people who are really utilize, utilizing the, the budget and uh, contributing best to the events are the ones that are making the decisions um, about what you guys are doing. So the next question is, if we host a study break, is our role to just talk up Google, <laughs> Google products? Yes. No, I'm just joking. Uh, while providing food, no presentation, et cetera. I think these are really kind of, you know what works best at your school, so you can um, adjust them accordingly. Um, and Miriam also has something to add. And one thing to keep in mind when talking about the products is going back to that student site, the google.com slash app slash students. So if you don't want to take the time to put together a, a formal presentation, this is a great interactive place to come to that you can kind of showcase some of the key, pro key features um, and functionalities of the product without putting together an actual um, presentation. So we'd encourage you to check that out, as well as some of the um, training resources, including videos and other presentations that are all online uh, that you can use um, in, in those contexts as well. Okay, the next question is, can the $100 be used on additional swag for larger recruiting events? If so, are we able to get discounts on that? Swag is always a big hit at events. So we know that Schwag's a big hit. Um, like I said before, we, we're not really doing recruiting events through the ambassador program. You guys are there to help, but the specialists will be leading those. Um, so they will have Schwag with them, and they will bring whatever they need. Um, if you guys want to do use Schwag for your smaller events, it's possible to, to order it online, um, but I don't think that that's the best way to use your $100. But the best thing to do is actually just show us that you're planning um, successful events, and then that's when we're, we'll start allocating Schwag to your guys' teams. The next question is, how detailed do our budgets need to be for the event proposals? Um, and I think Alex can answer this one. Um, okay, so you guys, your budgets, um, I think rough estimate is okay. So at the end of each event, you guys are going to send us your receipts. Um, you have the $100 to work with, and it's really up to you. So we're not as much approving budget out of that $100, but we might um, use information in order to decide who would get more budget. Um, so you can um, <laughs> you can fill in just kind of what you think is going to be um, the cost, and then just send us the actual receipt. Uh, the next question is, I'm an ENT ambassador, and I'm the only ambassador at my school. Should I focus on tech-related events, or should I try to do PSGA too? Um, so this question is actually interesting because we have different schools that have um, a higher engineering focus or maybe like a stronger PSGNA focus. 
Um, and it's up to you guys to kind of decide that. If you think that more people are going to be attending the engineering um, the engineering events and you want to just hold more events, then that, that should be fine. Um, study breaks and apps trainings tend to be um, PSGNA and ENG, so those would, would cover people who are engineers who are interested in coming to your events. Uh, the next question is, are we allowed to take help from other student bodies like the department student organization, organization to publicize and organize an event? Um, the answer to that is yes. You guys, um, you guys are representing Google, but you're, you're representing your university as well. So anybody who's interested in um, learning about Google or working with you to host events um, or advertise events is great. Um, the next question is a recruiting related question. So I'm a PSGA ambassador and a former Bold intern. When I hold non-recruiting events about apps training or general study breaks and people raise questions about summer internships in both areas, ENG and PSGA, what should I tell them? Um, okay, so that's a good question. That's actually a really good question. Uh, you guys are probably going to get a lot of questions about recruiting. Um, right now, the internships um, are, sorry, the engineering internships are live on the, on the website. Um, so you're going to want to direct people towards the student job site. Um, the full-time positions for new grads are also live for engineers, and for PSGNA, they're not up yet. So we'll try and keep you guys posted, posted on um, which jobs are already up, and then you guys can pass that information on. And you're also welcome to collect resumes and just direct them direct to your specialist that's assigned to your school. Um, and we'll post information about the jobs that are up on the investor site. So the next question is about the Google bus. Um, do we have any connection with getting the Google bus on our campus? It came last year and was a big hit. I'm really glad to hear that because I lived on that bus for 30 days. So I'm glad it was a big hit. Um, this year, we don't currently have any plans to bring the bus back, um, but we will be hopefully using you guys as ways to hold those kinds of events, um, maybe not with something physical like bringing a big bus uh, around the country, but um, the kinds of events that we held uh, on campus when the bus arrived in terms of training and reaching out to students and showing off some of the products and really talking about um, what was important and relevant to students about those products um, is really what you guys are here for. So, and as, of course, as we have new campaigns that come out and new things that we're doing on campus, you guys will be the first ones to hear about it and the first people involved um, to help spread the word on your respective campuses. The next question is, should events be restricted to students at my school or any other students in the area? Um, so basically, the answer to that is that, yes, you should probably be hosting events just for your school. Um, that's not hard and fast, so if you guys have um, other students who may be interested, they can come. It kind of depends on the, the situation, and if you want to formally invite another school, then you're going to want to put that in the approval form so we can approve it on a one-off basis. Uh, the next question is, I already have a WAVE account and gave out eight invites that I got with it. Will I still get more invites to give them? did receive um, an invitation already to WAVE um, as one of the ones that received eight invites. We're actually giving all of your um, accounts uh, an additional preview directly from the product team that gives you 99 invites. So this is separate from whatever you received already, um, and you will have 99 invites to play with as well in addition to that. The next question, is it possible to invite Google engineers to your events? Um, that's actually a good question. We, it, it, again, it depends on the situation. Um, if you guys need an engineer to be available at your events, you're going to have to request that on a one-off basis, and um, it's probably going to need to be a pretty, um, a pretty important event. Um, if you want to work with the specialist that's assigned to you, that'd be a good question for the person who's assigned to your school. Um, the next question is about the Green Sustainability Project. Um, so, if you have the Green Sustainability Group on campus is asked to do a joint event. Is there a place I can find the Google stamp on the Green Initiative? Also, are any of the apps focused on going green? So definitely that's um, a big priority for us, and um, we are happy to work directly with you on that. Um, if you just do a Google search about uh, green, Google's Green Initiative, you should be able to find some information, but we can also work directly with you um, on that as well. It's unlikely that we'll be able to actually send out any um, participants or resources for you guys on that end, um, but in terms of providing information, um, we're happy to connect you with the right people as well. Okay, we got a few more questions about um, the job postings, so I just want to reiterate that the job postings are all through the jobs website, so it's google.com slash students slash jobs, 
and you want to make sure to direct people there. Um, and the post, the information will be on the website, I mean, sorry, on the ambassador site, but you really want to make sure that you're directing all students to the, to the official Google job site. Um, and that's how any, any candidate is considered, no matter who refers them. Um, also, just uh, another um, uh, note that the start, uh, 2010 start, is actually up on the google.com slash students. So if people are interested in full-time opportunities, those are available. You can apply for that now. The next question is, if members of my team while I was an intern are interested in coming to give a talk, do you have funding for the hotel and such? Okay, so that's um, an interesting question as well. We don't at this point have, if, if you guys have members of your team who want to give a talk, um, we have a do-it-yourself program within Google. So they can actually get in contact with the specialist that's assigned to the school and tell them that they're interested in visiting. Um, it is an option, but we're not going to really um, align it with the ambassador program. So if you have engineers who want to come give a talk, then you guys should probably direct them to the specialist for your school. The next question is, um, I'm an Eng major, but I'm a PSG and an ambassador. Am I the only ambassador? Uh, I am the only ambassador at my school. Is it okay for me to organize Eng events? So this is a one-off situation. Um, but actually, that makes you the Eng and PSG and ambassador. Um, so you get you can hold um, any kind of event that you want on your school. Um, and I believe this is the last question. Um, and if you have any additional questions, please reach out to Miriam, Greg. Uh, Alex or myself, Kira, um, and we can answer it on a one-off basis. Um, we will be embedding the training um, online uh, on the ambassador site, so just keep an eye out for that. We'll also be sending out the link. So uh, on that note, the last question is, you mentioned flyers. I'm trying to hold a Tech Talk Friday, and I can't find flyers on the ambassador site. Can you give me more specific instructions? That's because they're not on there yet. <laughs> um, so we're going to put posts and templates for, for flyers and posters on the site soon. Um, if you need them now, you can email me directly and I'll send you a template. Otherwise, we would also encourage you guys to look at the um, university deployment site, which is something that we've created um, as a part of uh, our apps deployment. So if you go to google.com slash apps, slash university deployment. There's also some good templates and examples there if you click through to the awareness section. So on the right-hand navigation, you'll see some examples and templates of what schools have done to help promote um, their adoption of Google Apps. And I'm sure a lot of them will be useful for you guys to see as well. And um, they'll have some ideas you guys can take. So once again, thanks everyone for um, you know sticking with us. Oh, sorry, do we have one? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I thought I wanted to have something else to add. Um, so once again, thanks for sticking with us, with us through all the technical difficulties. We're actually having some uh, infrastructure problems are on our end with the conference room equipment. So uh, we won't be using this room in the future, so you can expect that we will be starting on time. Um, so thanks again, and uh, we hope to hear from all of you soon. Thanks. Bye.